giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the Sweet Tea Region Recap for Week 4. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Marshall. I'm Griffin. And I'm Kristen. Tonight, we're going to cover events that took place this week in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and the Chesapeake District. We will also have discussion topics and give you some previews for the action coming up next week. Let's kick things off to start with, with the PCH Forsyth event. 30 teams were in attendance at Denmark High School this weekend for the final Peach Street District event for district champs. While some expected this event to be fairly unimpressive, the reality was play continued to improve. Average scores were higher than what we saw at Columbus, both quals and playoffs, and the win margins were several points tighter. We saw two completed rockets and 19 HAB level three climbs and quals, but a continued absence of any unicorn matches. At the conclusion of 60 qualifying matches, Team 5109 Gladiator Robotics were seated at the top of the leaderboard. They had a solid level 3 HAB climb and a ground level hatch and cargo game that helped them win a majority of their matches. With their first selection, they chose Team 1771 North Gwinnett Robotics, sporting another L2, L3 climb and overall uh, MCC plus similar design. But well, then they rounded out their alliance with 6925 WAR Robotics as a dedicated defender, the number one seed alliance, as you would expect, bulldozed through the quarters and semis with scores 20 to 40 points higher than their opponents to reach the finals. On the other side of the glass stood the high-powered six-seed alliance. The captain of this alliance was Team 1746, Team Auto, with their all-black everything, high-efficiency cargo and hatch play, and their first pick, 6829 Ignite Robotics, a team who had already had a blue banner, went at Albany earlier this season due to their strong hatch and cargo play. And then they rounded out their alliance with Team 2415, the Westminster Wirecats, as a defender and with the possibility of a working L3 climb. Finals match one started out fairly close as both teams rushed to finish their cargo ships quickly. Uh, 6925 came across to play some defense, but their efforts were largely ineffective. Team 2415 crossed over to defend 1771 and found a lot more success for their efforts. Around 70 seconds remaining in the match, Team 6925 slammed into the blue cargo ship, descoring a hatch and becoming disabled, and that left the Blue Alliance unimpeded to score as they wanted while 2415 continued to harass the Red Alliance. Blue took match one with a score of 73 to 58. Once match two began, it appeared as if 1771 died right after leaving the hab at a sandstorm, and 6925 died crossing the field, taking a hit from 2415 at midfield. The blue at once filled one side of the cargo ship quickly, but then a combination of 6925 coming back to life and 1746 vision system not functioning properly began to cause trouble for the blue alliance scoring efficiency. Right at 68 seconds remaining in the match, 1771 returned to life and helped fill the remaining cargo ship bays with cargo as quickly as they could. Finally, combined level three and level two climbs of 5109 and 1771 red secured the game two win, forcing a rubber match. Match three began with less drama, but it didn't end that way. The Red Alliance came out of the sandstorm firing on all cylinders, but blue was having some issues. 2415 came off the hab and got stuck in front of their Alliance far side loading station, which severely slowed the performance of 1746 for a time. The Red Alliance and Blue Alliance bots mostly focused on the cargo ship, and there was some heavy defense action between 6829 Ignite Robotics and 6925 WAR Robotics. 6829 has a frame cut out of the front side of the robot for intaking balls and the back and forth pushing between the two robots. The corner of 6925's bumper entered that frame bumper gap at least twice, causing the closest ref call to uh, G20 fouls. 
This caused two yellow cards to be issued to 6925, which escalated to a red card and sealed the Red Alliance's fleet regardless of how many game pieces were scored. The number six seed Blue Alliance of 1746 Auto, 6829 Ignite Robotics, and 2415 the Westminster Wildcats completed the upset to take home the win. Congrats to Team 1746 Team Auto on their Engineering Inspiration Award win for that gold-silver clean bling, and to Team 4468, the Fernback Lynx, on their Chairman's Award win. Most improved team goes to 1746 Auto, stepping up their game from being a purely defensive and hatch bot at, at Gainesville to being able to score 10-plus cargo and hatches several times throughout the course of the event. Uh, Griffin, what do you have for us in South Florida? All right. Down in Florida, 64 teams converged for the South Florida Regional. 96 qualification matches yielded 12 finished rockets, six of which were unicorn matches. After the matches concluded, sitting at the top was the familiar team, 179 Children of the Swamp, who won the event or the event in 2018. They quickly paired up with Team 180 Spam to reform the duo from last year, rounding out their alliance with 5872 Wired Cats. The number one seed easily took the quarters, winning matches one and two by margins of 48 and 36 points, respectively. Then they took the two semi-matches with smaller margins of 23 and 9, but still made it through. In the finals, they faced the number two seed of 2383 Ninjaneers, 59 Ramtech, and 46, or 4065 Nerds of Prey. The number two seed fought hard, but it was too much for them, as the number one seed easily took both matches with scores of 109 and 109 to 70 and 101 to 69. Congratulations to teams 179 and 180 on their repeat win at the event, and to 5872 on their first ever event win in their history. Congratulations to 7744 Shark Attack on their EI and to 4707 Team Force on the CA. Chris, what do you have for us down in up in North Carolina? Well, 36 teams gathered in Robeson County at the University of North Carolina Pembroke this past weekend for the Pembroke District event. And after an impromptu fire drill delayed the start of the first match after opening ceremonies, this event ran smoothly of the other events this year in the state, which is probably a very welcome change, although Wake County was also pretty smooth. No Wi-Fi issues, no car drama, and some really great matches. Coming out of the gate strong was 5511 Cortex Robotics from Cary, North Carolina. They had a consistent climb that saw them finish in first place after battling for first place with uh, 4795 eSpots. Also worth mentioning is eSpots, who had a similarly consistent climb, and they were actually ranked first for a good portion of the event. Rounding out the top three was 4534 Wired Wizards from Wilmington. Each of these teams would go on to form the captains of the top three alliances in playoffs. One other team to mention was none other than the OG rookie bucket bot team, team 7671 Fire Hazard from Creedmoor, who ended up 15th overall at this event. Playoffs started with a bang with quarterfinal one going to the underdogs on the eighth seeded alliance, captained by 435, the Robo Dogs from Raleigh, North Carolina. They were also partnered with Team 6004 F of X and their recently completed level three climb. The first seeded alliance, captained by 5511, was not easily dispatched, though, and quickly came back from the break for the next two rounds. Semifinals also saw an upset, with the number three alliance, captained by Wired Wizards, beating the number two. The first match went to the number two alliance, but the number three alliance wasn't down and brought it back in the subsequent matches to take it home to the finals. In the finals, it was the number one alliance taking on the number three alliance. And the first round went to alliance number one with a score of 61 to 55. Finals round two, however, saw the number three alliance playing some heavy defense and taking it back with a score of 50 to 73. This led to the final round where alliance one had to call in a backup robot from team 6426, the Robo Gladiators, swapping out for team 5544 Swift Intergalactic Space Llamas from Bass, North Carolina, after they ran into some issues with their drive gearbox. Sadly, however, the swap wasn't enough to help the number one alliance, and the number three alliance brought home the gold. Congrats to our winners, the Wired Wizards, Team 4534, Team 7890 Sequence from Raleigh, and Team 3661 Robo Wolves. And congrats to Team 6500, the Gear Cats from Raleigh, on their Engineering Inspiration Award, and 23737 37 Rotoraptors from Goldsboro on their awesome Chairman's win. Griffin, what did we see up in Blacksburg, Virginia? All right. 
deep in the mountains of Virginia, 34 teams climbed their way to the CHS District Blacksburg event. This event saw no completed rockets, with a few teams coming up up to at least one cargo away. As their qualifications, 3072 backwood box <laughs> sat at the number one seat. They attempted to ask four different teams in the top eight, all of which declined. They eventually asked the host of the team of the event, 401 Copperhead Robotics, and they said yes. They rounded out the alliance with 5950 Trojans. The number one seed struggled out of the gate against the number eight seed of 3939 Botatot Robotics, 5724 Spartan Robotics, and 539 Titans due to 5950 disconnecting Mitch match. Even with a backup of 6194 Atrashocks, the number one seed lost out in the quarters to the number eight seed. There was... There was another upset that came from the number seven seed, but all eyes on the of the event were on the number three seed of 346 Robohawks, 619 Cavalier Robotics, and 3274 Rocktown Robotics, and the number four seed of Sparky, 384 Sparky, 977 Comet Bots, and 3455 Robot Revolution. These two alliances took down the, the two upset teams and went on to face each other in the finals. The first round, the number three seed won decisively with a score of 79 to 55. In the second round, 619 ran over a ball at high speed and it ended up on its side, unable to right itself, giving the second round to the number four seed. In the final round, 3274 played masterful defense, and the number three seed score, er, and the number three seed scored in one of the most dominant games I have seen, winning a score of 94 to 56. This marks the second blue banner win this season for 346, and the first blue banner in the history of 619. Congratulations. The 5279 Bionic Eagles on EI, uh, and the and the the host 401 Copperhead Robotics on their chairman's award. Their most improved of the event was 3274, who had the on, the only working rampod that worked several times during the event, and then also played masterful defense throughout the entire competition. So, Kristen, wh what do we have for our discussion of today? Well, first I want to point out that I missed a sentence in my review. 7675 Spark Guardians also won the Rookie All-Star Award at the UNC Pembroke event, and watching that team has actually been really awesome. But uh, let's take a grab bag of suspicious dialogue from the man on the corner of Conversation Street. Marshall, what do we have to talk about today? <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to talk about the thing that everybody's talking about, which is G20. What's up with that? Oh so my gosh. What, what is G20? Can you explain it to me, Chris? <laughs> All right. So G20, for those that are living under a rock right now, is a rule that's been in the rule book for many years uh, that is essentially in place to discourage purposeful damage against other robots, uh, particularly with mechanisms that extend outside of the robot and can potentially um, cause havoc inside of the innards of another robot. And in the past, it really hasn't been a big deal just because for the most part, teams really don't, you know, intentionally damage each other. However, if uh, any of you are watching Al uh, Asheville last week, there was a giant explosion of them being called in Asheville. And actually, looking back on it, I think there were a lot that went on in Guilford also, although there was only like three or so. So it wasn't significant, but it was kind of interesting. Um, but do do we think we've ever seen such a drastic change in the way a rule's been enforced like this in previous years? I think so. I mean, I don't know. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but I do feel like every year there's always a rule that gets changed or has to be explained in some way. Um, I think this is the most number of fouls I've seen in a long time, though, um, just being handed out. It, it seemed like every other match that I was watching on Friday was filled with G20 calls. Uh, I sort of had a different experience. Like, I haven't seen any sort of big calls of G20 and the Chesapeake events. Like I've seen like I've we've seen yellow cards of course and we've seen like weird ref calls on like but it was more towards of like okay did they get the climb or not? Did, what does this count as a climb? But I think the only biggest yellow card it, we've gotten is excessive defense, excessive pinning, etc like that. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm curious more so le less about G20 because it seemed like by the time finals uh, or playoffs matches were happening, it seemed like some of the calls had been slowed down as though a mysterious order had been given out. Um, but 
I'm hoping we see some transparency from uh, First HQ in regards to what they expect uh, from the G20 situation and how they expect refs to be calling things. So, Yeah, I would actually be shocked to not see some kind of... I was a little surprised to not see an update after Asheville last week just because there were so many of them. I think there were like six or seven cards by the end of the event, three of which on the same team. Um, yeah. But I, after, after especially Buckeye this past weekend, which I know was an absolute train wreck with like 12 plus yellow cards, um, I, I would be very surprised to not see some kind of either blog or something in the team update regarding kind of what happened. Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to see something incoming, but we'll see. So uh, silence could also be an option. All right, so uh, we're going to move on now to the top 10 for the Sweet Tea region. So, Griffin, what do you got for us? All right, so for the, your top 10 of the Southeast, at, sitting at number one is 179 Children of the Swamp from Riviera Beach, Florida. At number two is 180 Spam from Stewart, Florida. Number, at three, 59 Ramtech from Miami, Florida. Then 2383 Ninjaneers from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Then 346 Ripplehawks from Chesterfield, Virginia. Then 1369 Minotaur from Tampa, Florida. Then 70, 744 from Shark, Shark Attack from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Then 386 Team Voltage from Melbourne, Florida. Then 5949 Tech Garage from Delray Beach, Florida. Then 384 Sparky 384 from Henrico, Virginia. And now if you can guess that, I'm going to guess that Florida people had a lot of votes this week. <laughs> it seems like it, man. Wow. So I'm kind of impressed. We we gotta we gotta get back in it next week. I guess we've got district champs though. So Yeah, I think that'll that'll pull a lot more vision. I think the, the North yeah. Carolina event this weekend, there weren't as many notable teams at this one as there were at other events. Really, uh, Pitt Pirates, Boneyard and um, I guess you could say Wired Wizards because they're really having a breakout year where the, they're kind of the, the bigger names. And the 5511's always been really excellent. But outside of those handfuls of teams, it was more or less kind of your typical North Carolina event. But, yeah, it looks like Florida had a really awesome week. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right. Uh, well, Griffin, you want to take us away into the previews for next week? All right. So... For the Ch for Chesapeake District, we are currently done for district events. So this next week, we're taking a break. But then after that, it's the district championship. So I wanted to start off with doing a preview of uh, looking at some of the stats. So there are currently only three double banner winners in this in the district. That being 612 Chantilly Robotics, 346 Robohawks, and the surprising one, 6882 Fahrenheit Robotics, who did it both for times from the second pick. Now, now, with the district championships sort of set in stone, waiting for people to possibly decline, I want to congratulate the first-time qualifiers of 539 Titans, 2998 Viking Bots, 3072 Backwoods Bots, 3748 Ragnarok Robotics, 4099 Falcons, 6543 Pumatech, and 7770 Infinite Voltage. Now, there have been rumors circling about some teams uh, dropping, so expect others to come up from the list. So what do we have for the Peachtree uh, Championship, Marshall? Yep. So for Peachtree, the district champs, we've got, uh, as they're eagerly waiting for the final 45 teams that are going to head to Lakeport Champion Center in Emerson, Georgia, to compete for the district championship title. Should be significantly more competitive than the last year's uh, district champs. And I, for one, can't wait to see the playoffs there. Uh, the teams I think you uh, should watch have shown to be consistent performers or have shown significant improvement moving towards the state championship. And then, of course, because some teams have had some time away, might get some uh, kind of uh, dark horses coming up from the back of the pack. So the teams that I'm keeping an eye on, though, are 14-14 uh, IHOT, 4910 East Cobb Robotics, Team 832 Oscar, and Team 1771 North Gwinnett. And, of course, Team 6829 Ignite Robotics, Team 4026 Global Dynamics, and Team... 41, whoop, I've gone to the wrong place in this document. Hold on one <laughs> second. 4188 Columbus sorry. Space Program. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, 2974 Walton Robotics and Team 1746 Auto. So, and uh, outside of that, there's probably some consistent forces to be reckoned with. 5109 Gladiator, 4188 Columbus Space Program, 
and Team 1102 making magic. So, Kristen, how about for North Carolina's district championship event? 32 teams will converge on Campbell University this weekend, and it's looking like it'll be the most competitive district championship in the state yet, with a huge depth of really good teams competing. We obviously can't list them all, but there are a few that we do want to highlight as some, some of the front runners. Um, I promise I'm not plugging my own team, but 2655 ranked first in district points, first in the ELO ranking system developed by Caleb Sykes, and we're in roughly the top five of OPR across all the events. So they're kind of undisputedly one of the top robots at the event. They were on the winning alliance at both of their events and finished ranked third, despite only having a level two hab climb, which is unusual given the made of this game. We may or may not be bringing more auto routines to the table for Sandstorm. Also to watch, 5190 Green Hope Falcons, a very close second in the ELO ranking system, backed by years of success, and will I would expect to see them high, if not first, with their consistent climb and scoring capability with that two hatch auto. Couple other teams climb wise 2059, 3196, and 900, all very consistent climbs and good scoring robots. 5829 Titanium Tigers, probably the best tall hatch bot there. 2682, 2642 Boneyard and Pit Pirates. You will also want to watch out for 1533, who will be hungry to take home a banner after finishing his finalists at both of their events. And of course, all of the rookies this year have been extremely competitive, and this is without a doubt the best rookie class we've seen in the state since going district, but there are two teams that truly stand out to me this year above the rest. 7890 Sequence is coming off of their win with Wired Wizards this past weekend, after watch and after watching them repair basically half their robot in the short field timeout in the playoffs, this team has what it takes to stand up to the district championship pressure. And, of course, we can't forget our favorite OG bucket bot from 7671 Fire Hazard. With a newer and more reliable hatch mechanism after this weekend and a lift system on their famous bucket, this team is definitely not to be ignored. Sounds like a bucket of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> there are no buckets of this no. here. No, stop, uh, stop. <laughs> So, uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching. If you want more First Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for all things FRC. If you've got a few bucks to share, though, through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. On behalf of Kristen, Griffin, myself, and our producer, Nick, I would like to thank you for turning in and tuning in. And thank you all to our moderators in chat. Our next show is in Femidation, first in Michigan. Talk to you next week on FRC Southeast. So we tea region recap. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.